So this is the intake from a Mercedes C230 uh, supercharged engine model. Um, it's basically yeah, just a cold air pipe. It runs right behind the radiator. And I believe this baffle is primarily responsible for quieting that supercharger line. So pretty excited to try to integrate this with the Forester's intake system. All right, here she is, the completed intake with baffle. So ended up keeping the same like four inch cone filter because it happened to fit right over the plastic end of this uh, kind of baffled pipe. Um, on the other end, I took off all the OEM like plastic pieces. Um, this is kind of a complicated union where it's going over a rubber adapter over the silicone elbow. And on the inside of all that is a short section of two and a half inch aluminum pipe so that I have something to clamp onto. Um, and then over here we have, uh, I think also a short section of aluminum pipe so that we can clamp silicone to silicone. And then that's what adapts it to this larger MAF housing. And then we've just got a regular elbow and then we're just at two and a half inches from here on out. So yeah, let's see how this fits. So now the new intake baffle is fully installed. It stretches down there, makes a U-turn, got the MAF plugged in everything connected to the supercharger and most importantly the JB Weld has had plenty of time to cure about um, 30 hours I would say at room temperature so I think we are ready for yet another startup You know, it is more muted. It's interesting. But all right, let's go for a test drive and see if the uh, boost holds up. Just got back from the test drive with the baffle and with the JB welded on output flange. Um, from what I can tell, both of them did a good job. The baffle cut down on the noise by, I don't know, a third to a half, uh, just subjectively. Uh, it's definitely still the main noise you hear in the car when revving, but it's not overpowering. And I would say that on, on the highway, especially if you shift into fifth or sixth gear, it's totally fine. Um, the boost pressure is the only disappointment from this last test drive. I was still seeing, you know, no more than two and a half PSI once the car warmed up. So that kind of redirects my focus to probably the intake manifold. At this point, I'll try to pressurize it, do some more tests and see what I can find. Um, but yeah, so far so good, and I think all of these improvements to the supercharger were worth it, so. All right, first video in a little while, and uh, the weather's changing. So, lots of updates since last time. The biggest is that all of the boost leaks I had been chasing with this guy were explained. After doing some research and asking on the NAT Subaru forum, discovered the actual cause for boost fluctuations like after the engine fully warms up, was actually a restriction in the engine changing. Um, so right under this dark black plastic manifold that ends right there, there's another device. It's the aluminum right there. There's that rusty uh, end on it. Those are called temple generator valves, and they look a lot like throttle bodies. And the idea is that when the engine is cold, those temple generator valves are like half closed, so they create a restriction. The reason they do this is so that air actually tumbles and like better mixes with the fuel from the port injectors. Um, but what we are seeing is when the engine is cold, the uh, manifold right here in the manifold pressure sensor sees uh, five or six PSI uh, peak boost. And that once they open, once the coolant is up to temp, they're fully open, the restriction is gone, and the boost pressure decreases to about two PSI. So what this tells us is the supercharger is pumping out enough CFM to build two PSI of boost with this engine, you know, fully warmed up, operating normally. So if we want to create more than two PSI, uh, once the engine is, you know, uh, fully up to temp, 
we will need to pump more air. Basically, that's what it comes down to. So in this video, I hope to actually take off this uh, larger supercharger pulley and install a smaller one. Uh, at the time of filming, I'm still waiting for that to arrive, but in the meantime, I'm going to be installing an oil cooler. So right on here, in place of this um, simple oil filter, gonna be installing a sandwich plate, leading to an actual oil cooler placed somewhere in front of the radiator up here. So this very cheap universal oil cooler kit came with a sandwich plate, which is great, and it even matches my oil filter. Unfortunately, my oil filter housing has a lip on it, so I can't install it. But now I can. All right, so now I've got the oil filter sandwich plate fully tightened down. I've used some thread sealant on 1 8 NPT plugs, and I've routed the two 10, AN10 hoses out to where the cooler will be mounted. Um, here's what I decided to do for cooler mounting, just a piece of eighth inch aluminum angle that is going to bolt into this existing hole right here. All right, oil cooler is all installed and tested. Uh, no leaks have sprung from any of the hoses, uh, nor from the cooler itself. So we are good to put stuff back together. I have finally got a replacement pulley to install. It is smaller, it's only smaller by three millimeters, or about uh, 5%, but that should mean it pumps, you know, 5% more air into the engine. So first step will be to attempt to take the old pulley off. It's probably gonna put up a fight, but let's see how it goes. So my plan here is to use a three jaw puller. The puller itself attached. All right, so it's not coming off easy. All right, this thing means business. Uh, so far I've broken one of the jaws of a three jaw puller. All right, stepping up to a bigger puller. Terrifying stuff. I don't think I've ever experienced something this hard to tighten. And holy crap, before going to the slide hammer, I switched just this inner section. Same exact jaws as before, but now I think there's less uh, friction there, and it is coming right off. Boom. All right. Wow. Okay. So the difference between the center sections here, this was a 17 millimeter drive. Threads were starting to get chewed up, and I think worst of all, this thing was providing a lot of a mating surface and also a lot of friction against what I was trying to push against. And here, there was no, um, no additional bearing, no additional joint, uh, and it worked great. So, excellent. Um, so we can pull this apart real quick. And here is the old pulley compared to the new pulley. And they look very, very similar. The one on the right is just about three millimeters narrower than the one on the left. Okay, so heating up the new pulley to get the metal to expand. Unfortunately, that was not successful, so I'm going to have to pull it off and try again. Okay, so try two. You can see a lot of the paint is gone, but still no luck heating this up enough for it to expand so we can get it over that shaft. So I'm going to try one more time with a lot more heat. Hmm. It is on there, and I'm very interested in not letting too much heat enter the supercharger. Okay. So I think so far so good. I'm going to check the temperature of the belt. Okay. 
So here we've got a recording of one of the first pulls of the car. Um, I was looking for over three pounds of boost. With this particular pull, I didn't get it, but uh, with later pulls, I was seeing just over three pounds on average. Uh, I'll put up a still of one of those now. So yeah, good things to notice here as we get on power is the AFR going down to about 11.24 value. That's the minimum of the sensor. So we know that there's no issue with fueling, at least, you know, at these boost levels. Back from the first drive with the new pulley, I'm seeing about a 5% improvement in the absolute manifold pressure, about a 5% improvement in the amount of air flowing through the engine, and therefore it should be about a 5% improvement in horsepower. Um, yeah, in this drive, I mean, it wasn't a night and day difference, but I saw it was making more boost. Um, I saw the MAF rate was higher, so I know it's making more power. The AFRs are still good as well, so that's a really big plus. Um, seeing those safe kind of still pegged at rich AFRs, but um, that's all good for now. Um, ultimately, I'd want to tune those to be a little bit higher, you know, maybe uh, high 11s or something like that, but yeah. And then zooming in on some of the damage from installing the pulley, um, I think it looks a lot worse than it is. This uh, shaft is still absolutely centered with the uh, where the belt touches. So all the belt ribs are fine, it's just a bit of mushrooming from having to hammer on the snout of this uh, pulley. All right, so yeah, what's next? Um, so I found that there is actually a smaller pulley for sale online, one that might be able to make, I don't know, four or five pounds of boost. Uh, the other things to consider are just going with a completely different supercharger instead of throwing money at this setup. Um, Yes, the supercharger is pretty understressed. Um, it's not making a lot of boost right now, but I think um, clearly it, we're running out of options for actually increasing its output. One of the next things I want to do, just kind of for fun, is stitch together a naturally aspirated intake that sits over there somewhere. So just air filter, MAF sensor, elbow into the throttle body. And uh, one of these days, go out and compare the NA performance to the supercharged performance back to back. And I would just need to swap out the belt, redo the uh, hose clamp and kind of select which intake to run, that kind of a thing. Um, I think that'll probably make the most dramatic difference, you know, before and after if I record like a zero to 60. So look forward to that. And thanks for watching.